Doctors, thank you so much for taking the time with me today. Excited to hear what's next for Edamam. You know, you've been a leader in this idea of, of food as medicine, but not just food as medicine, but food data and how that can, can contribute to our health and global health. So talk me through the Edamon platform and what you've built. Yeah, let me first take a step back and give you the, the broad vision, the mission of the company, why we're doing all what, what we're doing, and then I'll get into the nitty gritty and the, and the platform. So the basic belief of the company is that food is the ultimate medicine, right? And that if we eat right, we will live long, healthy lives. We're not going to get sick from chronic conditions or mental illnesses. Yes, there will be acute accidents and uh, incidents and so on and so forth. But we will be not having to go to a hospital because we have chronic conditions. So what our goal was, let's organize the world's food knowledge and give it back to people so they can make the right smart food choices so they can live the long, healthy lives and never get sick. You know, if we had our ways, this show wouldn't exist. You know, because there'll be no sick people, there's no, no need for health care, there'll be need for preventative health, managing your health, being proactive, being happy, being healthy. Uh, and what we realized really early on when we started the company is that one of the big problems is food data and understanding what mm. to eat is very disorganized, contradictory, just plain confusing. I mean, there's so many fat diets, so many ways that people approach it. And ultimately, it's a data problem. Ultimately, if we can organize and structure the food and nutrition data and then start knowing a lot more about the person, you know, their blood chemistry, their genome, their microbiome, their habits, their likes, dislikes, allergens, we can start recommending to them healthy and delicious food that they enjoy and they can live long, healthy lives. So that's kind of the background. And so we started the company with the idea of let's organize the world's food knowledge and give it back to people to make the right smart food choices. And over the years, we've done a lot of that. We've built probably the largest database of meals, food and nutrition in the world. We have over 5 million recipes and a million foods. We've analyzed and tagged them for every nutrient, every allergen, every lifestyle diet, 200 chronic conditions, meal type, dish type, cuisine, even CO2 impact. And we are charging a hat with lots more of that. Let's talk about the practical ways that you can use that data um, for you know new innovative apps or programs. Like obviously what you're creating is a, a foundation to enable new innovation, Correct. right? So, so what are some of the ways you can tap into food data for health? Yeah, so part of the beautiful thing about our platform is that we don't know all the ways that it can be used. So we we have open APIs and that's one of the primary ways we sell our data. And we have over 100,000 developers that have subscribed to the APIs and they're building apps. And we know some of those apps, but a lot of them we don't know what people are inventing or creating. But some of the key use cases are personalized meal recommendations and particularly in the health space that's around chronic conditions around population health you know corporate wellness not necessarily just allergens and lifestyles but yeah i have type 2 diabetes with comorbidity uh with high you know hypertension what should I be eating, this type of thing? And we can and, answer that question. And importantly, a much smarter meal recommendation engine than people are used to. Because this is one of those areas I know that um, there have been companies in the past that tried to sort of, um, uh, sort of handle the, the low-hanging fruit without validated resources. And yeah. you're really coming in with a whole, le whole new level of data. Yeah, we, we do have validated resources, but what, where I think the point of difference from the previous generation is we actually, uh, truly believe in personalization mm. and precision and so we can recommend on the spot in real time something that's very very precise to you personally as a profile but also things that may be happening in the context of today this meal you know where you are uh, whether you're eating with somebody that has an allergen or maybe something that you dislike like onions or you just bought asparagus and salmon what can you do with that that fits all your nutrition profile we can answer that in real time so we believe in that kind of real-time personalization in order to deliver something that delights the customer at the end one thing that uh, I love about you, Victor, is that you really dream out into the future and you really, really think about what's possible years from now. And you're building this platform that enables innovation. So I want you to sort of think out 25 years, think out, think out past what we're currently doing and think uh, what are some of the exciting use cases that we haven't even started on that could tap into this food data. Yeah, that gets me really excited because I, I, I started the company, I had like a 50 year vision of where we want to go. 
uh, and, and, and some of it is starting to gel together. And a lot of it is combining existing technologies to create a situation where people have seamless interaction with food that they enjoy. I call it virtual nutritionist, you know, so that virtual nutritionist sits somewhere in the cloud and resides on your watch, in your refrigerator, your car, anything that you interact with, you know, might be a billboard, uh, but that virtual nutritionist knows you very, very well. It knows your real-time blood chemistry, you know, based on maybe nanobots that are in your blood or some other things, you know, patches that you may be wearing that in real time send in uh, near field communication signals about the blood chemistry. Uh, it knows uh, things around your genome because of genome sequencing and epigenetic uh, analysis that are done regularly. It may know things around your microbiome because you're using smart toilets or other ways to constantly measure your know, microbiome content. It also knows your likes and dislikes. Uh, it knows um, uh, what what you might have in your refrigerator uh, or where you are personally right now. And so a couple of scenarios that, that I, I would highlight is, for example, you're in a meeting downtown New York and finish your meeting and it's lunchtime and the virtual nutritionist knows what your blood chemistry is, what you had for breakfast, knows what you like and says, hey, within 300 feet there are those five restaurants and there is these six dishes that are within your budget that really fit your profile and you really enjoy and you want to walk in and buy it or order it this is truly delightful i don't have to think about it you know yeah. this is what i'm gonna get or you're driving back home from work and the virtual nutrition says hey what do you want to do for dinner uh, you know, you can order in or cook. And if you say cook, they, it says, okay, well, we know in the refrigerator you have those three ingredients. Uh, if you get those two more, you can go do this dish. And, uh, you know, you, you know, your significant other is coming back home. The kids are coming back home. You can guys all have that within 45 minutes. Do you want to do it? Say yes. It dispatches a drone that delivers those two ingredients gets them home just in time when you arrive the kitchen robot starts chopping the onions for you and then you create a wonderful meal you finish it up and something that you really enjoy this is all data yeah. you know and those are all technologies that currently exist that just need to be combined in one place yeah. to be able to deliver that delightful and you know, like you said experience. it all starts by having that foundation of data Yep, it underneath it always all data yeah so tell me uh, what are you excited about for Edamom for the next year so, first of all, lots of new business opportunities, uh, which has been great. Um, and we are excited about a couple of new products that we are developing. So we, we're going deeper and deeper into the data. So one thing that uh, we're looking at developing is flavor and texture profiles of meals, uh, not just food. So be able to, to, to say this is briny, spicy, citrusy and whatnot. And then over time, allow our customers to do personalization based on what people are eating. So, you know, if somebody is constantly eating chili, maybe they like, you know, spicy, smoky food, and then we can start recommending spicy, smoky food without them even more personalized, more first for the yeah. personalization. So that's one, you know, we, we are looking to partner with University of South Carolina around inflammation. And we truly believe that inflammation is the best indicator of how people should eat, yeah. not kind of the government plate that many servings of vegetables, grains, so on and so forth. But, you know, how does the body react to food? Uh, and inflammation is at the bottom of aging and almost all chronic conditions. So that's another thing that we, we want to develop is in inflammatory index for every recipe and meal out there so people can understand that. Uh, so that, that's, that's another thing that we're looking at. We also are looking to start developing uh, a recipe trending analysis to see what people are publishing in the recipe world to, to kind of track what's new, what's exciting, what are the new ingredients that people get excited about. I mean, you know, you, I don't know if you remember, kale became suddenly a big thing, then avocado became a big thing. Acai and, berry. You know, yeah, the acai berry, and so all of them, you know, become big, big things. We can probably notice that ahead of time, just based on, you know, publications in recipes by bloggers or websites and so on and so forth, as those ingredients start appearing. So that's another product. And then last but not least, international expansion. So we have English, Spanish, some German, uh, we're looking to do a couple more European languages and, and hopefully establish an office in Asia and focus on Mandarin and, and Japanese and, and the languages in Asia. Exciting stuff, Victor. Thank you so much for taking the time with me. Really excited to see how you continue to build this foundation for the future of how we eat. I'm looking forward to this being a part of my life in the future based off of your work. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. All right. Take care.